Well, if we have time for one sure. more, let's let's, let's continue on uh, with covenant theology. Now moving to uh, the covenant of grace and uh, and its nature and, and administration. Uh, this question comes from a a brother who is training for ministry and has been wrestling with uh, how to understand the covenant sign of baptism. We'll probably get some follow up questions as a result of this, or so we're we're, <laughs> we're stoking it up for another listener question uh, episode. But um, he found quite helpful uh, one of our old episodes from back in uh, 2012 uh, with uh, doctors Tipton and Gaffin and uh, Mr. Jared Oliphant, uh, wherein they discussed covenant baptism and election. Yeah, and he he noticed that uh, was in the carriage house, Jeff. Okay, oh, remember okay. that. Yes. Yeah, that's great. That was a good episode. Anyway, sorry, Ryan. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, there are some gems from back in, you know, uh, 2012, <laughs> 2008. People write in saying, hey, I was listening to this episode, and I, I said, well, that was 15 years ago. You know, it's incredible. <laughs> um, so do check our back episodes. But uh, this, this brother notes that toward the end of that episode, one of the panelists said that the vital is not the same as the formal administration of the covenant. And so he has a few follow-up questions to that. He asks, does the vital inform the administration of the formal covenant sphere? In other words, does the eschatological alreadiness of the new covenant inauguration change the way in which the sacrament is administered? He writes, I think scripture is clear that before Christ's second coming, the covenant people is mixed and sadly apostasy happens. However, does the intent of the covenant, that is, salvation, regulate who is considered a part of it? Jeff, what do you, uh, what do you say, brother? Well, um, it seems to me that our brother who's asking the question is presupposing a credo-baptist uh, orientation. He, he uh, did mention that in the, in the email. Um, okay. But I, so, I mean, once I'm, I say I'm, Reformed Baptist, uh, I'm yeah, sniffing we, it, I'm sniffing it out. Um, whom we love. But Jeff's yeah. hearing a sibilant well, thing, thing is going you, on here. <laughs> um, I don't, of course, remember the details of the conversation between Lane and Dick Gaffin and, sure. and Jared. Uh, all the details that went into that conversation. Uh, Camden, was that in any way tied to the book that was uh, published by Crossway some years ago by Brothers from Southern Baptist Seminary. I, I, I don't. I. They might have been in the. Here's for my for my French francophile over here. Uh, might have been in the milieu, but okay. I think the pre, the, good. the precise uh, <laughs> subject matter or impetus of this was more or less focusing on Paul King Jewett and Paul Paul Jewett's work. Oh well, yeah. Okay, the former professor at Fuller Seminary back in the day. Uh, Jewett's. I've read Jewett's work, actually, but now some years ago, uh, probably more than 30 years ago. Uh, um, it seems the, the vital element, what we mean is the working of the Holy Spirit, that is the presence of new life, that is regeneration, right? Which is what baptism points to. So the, the, the questioner is asking about, is there... Almost, if I can reword the question to, to help clarify my own thinking and giving an answer, uh, is, it, is it God's intent for the formal uh, administration of the covenant to be devoid of the vital? Do you think that's a fair rewording of, of that part of the question? Because yeah, I, I think, think so. Go ahead. that some 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 of our, our brothers rightly would ask that question: Are we playing? Are we only concerned with playing the the game by the rules, and we're not concerned with the point of the game? I guess would be another way of of of, of saying this. In other words, he grant he readily grants what all baptists of every stripe would grant, and that they recognize there are apostates. So there's we're not we're both a uh, recognizing that people do apostatize from the faith. They do depart from the faith. They, they repudiate their profession. Or nowadays, right. they like to use the word deconstruct. There are people out there now who are former believers who deconstruct their witness. Uh, 
of course, uh, there are different reformed answers. Uh, I'll give you mine. Uh, baptism of an of either an infant, a teenager, or an, a full grown adult uh, is about the promise of God, not about the internal state of the person receiving the baptism. Amen. With the exception that, of course, with a with a a teenager or an adult, we the session or the consistory, if you're in the continental tradition, would 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 be looking for a credible profession of faith. But then again, and we're getting almost we're touching the first question that you asked me. I said you can't get out of your own subjectivity in the sense of when you hear God's word, it's you hearing God's word. God's word is not is not your hearing of it, but there, so there is a distinction between the objective nature of God's word in our hearing it, but we still need, we, we, but there is, we, there's no way of getting away from the, we hear it, right? That that's part of God's creation. That's how we're made. Uh, so the baptism is, is, and this is, I think the big difference is that it is about God's promise. If, one believes the promises of the gospel, one will be saved. And the, the rite of baptism is pointing to uh, regeneration, but it's not an infallible sign of it. Now, even a Reformed Baptist or any Baptist will probably readily grant that it's not an infallible sign. That's how you end up with apostates, right? Because we're not Arminian. We don't believe you can actually be saved and then apostatize uh, or lose your salvation. Uh, so uh, ideally, I can say there would be the vital element. I'm not uh, comfortable with either presumptive regeneration. I'm really not quite comfortable with with uh, and this, and I'm probably the odd man out here. I don't even think that that we should presume that the children of the elect are saved. I, I want that to be the case, of mm -hmm. course. And there are many bless outward blessings that we have by being uh, born into and raised in a Christian family, born into a church that baptizes infants. Uh, and there is, of course, the negative side of baptism. If we do not come to faith in Christ, we will be judged by a more harsh standard than those who have not either heard the gospel or who have never uh, received the sign. So ultimately, the sign is not a state of our, you know, sometimes it's been said, uh, baptism is an outward sign of an inward state. Well, no, in fact, that can't, that ideally would be the case, but it really is not about our inward state. Uh, primarily, it's about God, the, the reliability of God's promises, the truthfulness of God's promise. When he says, if you believe on, on my son uh, unto salvation, you will be saved. None will be put to shame. Uh, but we do not have uh, an infallible uh, gauge by which you know, that we can stick on the top of, of an infant's head or on the top of a teenager or a grown adult, and it tells us whether this person really is saved. Ultimately, we can only go by words and behavior, right? Words, the profession and character, those two things. Uh, in, in, in our assessing of others, yeah. we can know now, converse the contrarily, we can know whether we're saved. I'm talking about us looking at other people. Okay, so going back to the question, uh, does the vital, in what does he mean by inform? Let me ask a question uh, for quick, sure. Jeff, of you, because uh, I think it's related, but it might help, uh, it might help the, the questioner. Uh, and for everyone else, when we're speaking of vital and formal, we, we recognize that there are members of the covenant that are not vitally united to Christ. I mean, we, he speaks of, uh, I am the vine, you are the branches. But in this present eschatological age, this present covenant age, uh, there are members of the covenant, correctly members of the covenant, but they're formally members 
they're church members uh, that nevertheless are unregenerate and then don't come to faith and they'll be removed. Uh, they'd be cut off. Paul uses the analogy of the olive tree and natural and unnatural right. branches to talk about Jew and Gentile relations in the one church of Christ, the covenant community in Romans chapter 11, if you'd like to read about that. But the bigger question is here with the, the our Reformed Baptist brothers and sisters is a difference on the new covenant community. Is, I don't know if every RB would say this, but many of them would say there are no unregenerate members of the new covenant. And this Correct. is a great difference that we have. So we would we would say, and I believe we could bear out many scriptural references for this, but this is the point of discussion, that there are unregenerate members of the new covenant. There won't be when Christ returns and he separates the sheep and the goats and the wheat and the chaff. But the Reformed Baptist, as you mentioned, acknowledges that, that there are apostates. They will acknowledge that people who have received some people who have received baptism will deny the faith and aren't of Christ. They're unregenerate. They're reprobate. But also, then they make the move to say, "Well, they were never members of the covenant in the first place, ever. Not only were they not elect, but they weren't ever a member of the covenant. So there is no like church membership is not identified with covenant membership for the Reformed Baptist, and that's a major difference. So we we get that on board, right? On the table, at least. Sorry, go ahead. I just said, yeah, we want to get that on the table as, as yeah. something we're discussing because for a lot of reform folk, and I don't mean to be pedantic, but I mean, in, I'm not, for a lot of people who confess a, an historic reform confession other than the London Baptist Confession, <laughs> okay, uh, we, we, we speak in certain ways that, that the reform Baptists are, would reject some elements of our presuppositions that go unspoken. So it's helpful sometimes to say th- these things out loud. We believe that when someone right. is is baptized, children of believers even, when they're baptized, they are members of the covenant, members of the church. Non-communicant members, but they're members of the church. They're members of the new covenant. The new covenant. Yes, we could say the new covenant community, the new covenant family, whatever. They're members of the new covenant. But that doesn't mean that by default, just because they've been baptized and brought into the covenant, that therefore, that they are elect, and therefore, they will enter into the new heavens and the new earth. We don't know. I mean, we can we can do the best we can to judge, but we I don't have a copy of the Lamb's Book of Life on my shelf, as much as I'd <laughs> like one. Um, I'd certainly know where to spend my time more in terms of who to hang out with, but I guess, you know, <laughs> um, you know, but... <laughs> Really, if I had that, it's like, you know, you know, I know somebody can't be saved or is eternally reprobate. And, you know, this is all crazy questions, crazy ideas. And I don't mean to make light of them, but we are not privy to the Lamb's Book of Life, probably for good reason. But um, we should also take seriously the covenant membership of those in this present life, because there are significant benefits and blessings to being part of the covenant, even in this life. Uh, you're read Hebrews six, <laughs> read uh, read Romans three <laughs> about the Jews, um, but we don't see much of a distinction between the fact that there were Jews and not all Israel is Israel, um, I, and, and in terms of unbelieving Jews could be cut off, but um, and so that unnatural branches like myself could be grafted in. But if they, if the natural branches that were cut off, meaning ethnic Jews, were cut off because of unbelief, they still can be grafted back in if they come to faith in Jesus Christ. I really, Jeff, I help me here, brothers, both of you. I I don't understand how I want to know, but I I, I have trouble understanding how a Reformed Baptist does full justice to the passages of the separation of the sheep and the goats, the wheat and the chaff, or or. Malachi chapter 4, and the purification of the covenant community when Christ returns. I mean, the the analogy there is to the members of the covenant, the household of Israel. And these aren't just interlopers. There's a full purification and a separation of the wheat wheat and the chaff and the sheep and the goats. I don't think that's just a separation of the church spatially from those who are reprobate around them or, or spatially among them. It's a separation of the family, uh, of of those who are elect and those who are not, those who believe on Christ alone for their salvation, and those who 
are, are members of the church because they profess faith, but they deceive themselves and others, right? Right. Like, what is, what is Jesus talking about? I mean, that, that's, the, that's a significant a significant lesson he's teaching us, and and he's speaking, I believe, to the to the covenant family, not just to. Don't worry, church. Eventually, all all you who are true members of the covenant will be will be spared from the presence of all of these outsiders. It's their wolves among you, but those aren't just people who visited, is what I'm trying to say. They're they're right. covenant members for now, but they'll be purged eventually. I think the well, and you've already said it that that uh, the diff one of the thing one of the the I think uh, standard views is that that was God's way of working in the old covenant, but not in the new. Again, yes, um, right, and and related to that would be that uh, if if you had a Venn diagram, one circle was covenant membership, and the other was election, or uh, who are the elect? Pre- precisely, uh, those two do not overlap. Uh, exactly. You know, 100 percent. Right? Like, so, well, my question comes back to Malachi 4 then. If if he's speaking to Israel and he's speaking a final judgment and he's speaking of a purification of Israel, I mean, that I that has historically not happened. I mean, he's talking about Elijah coming to prepare the day of the Lord. And then he's talking about the, the baptism by fire that Christ will will institute and administer in his final judgment. But yet he's talking to the Old Testament covenant people about final judgment. Like, it, it, what does that mean? If, if you're not going to take a dispensational hermeneutic to divorce Israel from the church and say, well, that's just talking about Israel at the end days, not the church. I, I, I struggle to understand how the, how the RB position makes sense out of passages like that. And, and I don't mean that lightly i don't at all mean that in a in a demeaning way but it it seems it seems difficult to hold together for, but maybe that's just because of my presuppositions and my hermeneutic already and i'm blind to to completely satisfactory ways to explain it but at least i'm just being honest this is this is what you know answering questions fielding questions off the top of my head this is what's coming out no no that that was uh that was good i mean it's a good point uh that if you don't have the dispensational hermeneutic which reformed baptists don't if they're consistent uh, you know a confessional confessionally consistent with the 1689 london baptist confession uh but th- this is, this would probably be good if we we had some folk actually reformed baptist uh, brothers and sisters of in, course. The, in the room to they could answer yes. or they might not be able to answer that question but they a good possibility they would be able to answer the Malachi 4 Amen. question uh, we would say that that, that of course uh, gets fulfilled at the final judgment right. uh, so that it's even though it's spoken to historical israel it will find its fulfillment with the Israel of God, yeah, is that how you would look at it? Amen, uh, brother. Canada? That's exactly okay. how I would see it. So okay. it's 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 the, uh it's not anti-Israel, but but now unnatural branches. I'm connecting a lot of different passages right. of scripture. It's the expansive but, Israel, exactly, exactly. The expansive Israel, which doesn't yeah. replace Israel, but it fulfills no. it in and through Christ. Correct. Right. Yeah, and our RBs would love that. I mean, my my RB friends, you know, would would love that ecclesiology uh, on on those points. And I'm very thankful for that. But it, but you know, I want to go step a step further and understand that um, when we're speaking of new covenant membership and church membership now, we have a high view of church membership. But also, church membership is not one hundred percent identical with the election. Like you said, Jeff, it's a Venn diagram. There are those who are members of the church who who will leave, but it's not because they never were members to begin with. That's the difference. Right. You know, we want to have a high view of church membership, but also um, an understanding that that people can trample underfoot the blood by which they were sanctified. Hebrews six, right. Hebrews ten. Yeah. Very good. Wonderful. Sobering truths. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll talk oh, more. No doubt, so. we'll get a lot of follow up to that. But these are the kinds of things we could talk uh, about more on on this program. We can talk about more in some live sessions on our on our chat app. Right maybe Twitter spaces, but also in person. That's what we got to do in person in the studio. We can have our little colloquia symposia Mm -hmm. 
Is it colloquia, Jeff? You're the Latin guy. Yes, colloquia. Yeah, colloquia. Colloquia and symposia. It's the plural. Colloquium would be the Hippopotamuses. Singular. Yes. Hippopotami. Hip- <laughs> <laughs> syllabuses. You're the, you're the syllabuses guy. Yeah, that's only because I heard it from Sinclair Ferguson. Well, it's been adopted. So once it becomes like an English thing, it, it, it right. affords I mean, the, degenerate plural Both uses. Both mm-hmm. the syllabi has been used so long, it's just <laughs> part of the, the, the language. 